no. Nah. No, nah, don't don't say you didn't come back again. Seven months straight without a class miss. What's up, Chad? What's up, Chad? In the chat room. Let's talk about like some of the top conspiracy theories. Raise your hand if you believe in aliens. Who here thinks about Bigfoot? What about the Bermuda Triangle? Oh, Illuminati. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Saglish, aka Sag, and I have released this in a shorts term. It was two shorts. I don't know technically how long they have to be or how long they can be, but I am currently making shorts. I was trying to think of the video what to do. I didn't have any video games or anything lined up, and I do have a video lined up for Friday, but I wanted to take a second to sit down, and I was like, I was sitting there thinking, and I was watching this guy, and I actually came across a short on YouTube of the streamer who had a fan watching it during their school time. And I guess the teacher saw it on their end and wanted to not necessarily embarrass them, but pull it up on their class to show everybody what he was doing, how he wasn't supposed to be in there. And I can feel it from both ends. I mean, I'm a teacher and I get how frustrating that teacher could be, but at the same time, we're not there to purposely irritate or purposely annoy students. If you're in the class or if you're at home and you're using a computer given to you by the school, it is the property of the district, and I have to do my due diligence to make sure you are using it as you should. It's not that I don't do my job, but if you're making an A or you're a student that does what they're supposed to and you're doing everything I'm asking of you, I'm going to look at you a little bit less than the kids who are failing, who aren't even trying. This is like how a teacher feels in today's age with COVID going, depending on where you're at, is depending on what kind of schooling you're getting. Currently, I am in Florida. I am a teacher of middle school, and I have six total classes. I have three face-to-face, -face, strictly face-to-face -face students. I literally have like 18 to 20-something students in my class. We're six feet apart or as far apart as we can be, and I'm doing everything. Like Kids are having a mask on. I have a mask on. When I walk around, make sure they're good. I wear a little face protector. I also have two classes, one block period that's hybrid. And that means half the kids are at school and half of them at home. And as a teacher in this day and age, I mean, obviously, even as a student, we the, trust me, your parents feel for you, your teachers feel for you. The students feel for us as far as teachers goes because it's, it's difficult. It is difficult. And I at least have middle school. My wife has elementary, so I can only imagine what that's like. But it's a time of change. It's a time of learning new things. And it's a time of growing, whether it be the right way or the wrong way. I'm not one who lets uh, things go. And I, I guess number there's there's a couple of things that help me out. Um, not that I'm a great social media media person or a great YouTuber. I at least try new things. I'm trying to adapt and make things fun for the kids. I am on the younger side when it comes to teaching. So I still have that connect with the students who, I get it, they don't wanna be there. They don't necessarily love math. And I, I, one of the great things, I, I always complained about it, but one of the great things for me was being able to teach intensive math, which is the remedial math for middle school. The great thing about that is, understand that students not necessarily don't understand what's going on. They just weren't taught a certain way and they need other ways of finding that instruction. It sucked because it is so stressful. It's so like just draining that these kids try so hard and they just don't get it. They get frustrated. I understand that. I also have taught pre-algebra every year that I've taught and I'm still teaching it to this day. I do feel that with me doing what I do on social media, with me being who I am, with me trying to connect with the kids, whether it be, you know, professional, um, like... <laughs> I'm unprofessional to a degree. I mean, I don't know any other teacher that tells kids scary stories, but I mean, it's a way to connect with the kids and it gives them some incentives to, you know, do the right thing and also to do right for themselves. I have two sketches coming up. The first being how it feels to be basically a teacher uh, teaching hybrid is the same thing as a Twitch streamer or a YouTube streamer. Uh, the only difference is every now and then, I, I do have some kids who do a great job talking to me back and forth on it. And, you know, it's great when they do that. But I also have those students who are just dead silent. I call roll and that is all I get from them. They get a hear. They don't get on camera. They don't answer me. 
nothing like that. So that that's a little bit irritating, but it feels literally it feels like as a teacher that you're a Twitch streamer that sucks and you only have a certain amount of kids in your uh, stream at every time. The second one is literally it is taken like almost verbatim from today's lesson it was Tuesday we're te we're teaching the Pythagorean theorem and how to get the kids interested I understand that math isn't the best and I try to make it as you know fun and exciting as I can but to get them into it I start off with the difference between a theory and theorem and then I go into conspiracy theories and then we talk about it and how it can change certain things and change the way people think so with that said guys I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's a little long-winded intro. Oh, welcome back, chat. How's it going? Welcome. It is Wednesday. I'm glad to see you. Glad that you're back here again, learning and living life to the fullest. Appreciate you guys stopping by yet again for another day this week. <laughs> let's get started, chat. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you guys in here, you guys good? All right, let's get on the board. Let's go ahead and let you guys see what they see. Oh, you can't see? Uh, it's my, hey, hey, chat, is my, my audio okay? Can you guys hear and see me okay? You guys, we good? Uh, hey, uh, can, no, oh, oh, we got someone in the chat typing. Yo, what's up? What's up, Johnny? What's going on, man? Appreciate you answering me, man. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you for answering me. Hey, yo, Nick is here again. What's up, dude? What's up? Oh, nah. Nah, don't, don't say you didn't come back again. Seven months straight without a class miss. What's up, Chad? What's up, Chad, in the chat room? All right, guys, we are on day two of the Pythagorean theorem. When we talked about it, we talked about the difference between theory and theorems. I know they sound almost the same, and in fact, this, they're spelled almost the exact same, except for two letters. And so when I think about theories, I think about conspiracy theories, something that I look up all the time, something that I research, something that I just found interesting way back when. Has anybody in here heard of conspiracy theories before? All right, all right. Um... Well, okay, so maybe you haven't heard of the term conspiracy theories, but maybe you have heard of the ones I'm about to ask you. And so if you guys would, just kind of give me like a hands up, hands down. Um, if you do believe, hands up. If you don't care or don't whatever, you don't have to vote. But I, I just kind of want to get a feel for this. Let's talk about like some of the top conspiracy theories. Raise your hand if you believe in aliens. Anybody know aliens? Aliens? Okay, uh, a little bit less than what I thought there was, or what, four hands up? So aliens, I, I'm not, and again, hey, I'm not here to prove or disprove if it's real or not. There is no right or wrong answers in the class, you know? Who here thinks about Bigfoot? Anybody know Bigfoot? What about, oh, well, uh, I guess since we're technically in Florida, it's the Swamp Ape. Do you guys know the Swamp Ape? Okay, one person, hey, we're going to get to that in a second. Hey, and everybody in here, I'm going to prove to you why you're wrong. But uh, no, in all seriousness, man, uh, I am going to show you some of the things I have seen in the past and prove to you why whoever's shown you this stuff is fake. What about, uh, let's see. Oh, that's a good one. I didn't even think about that. What about the Bermuda Triangle? Bermuda Triangle? The Triangle? Yeah, not the Pythagorean theorem. No, that's not that's a right triangle, yeah. But the Bermuda Triangle and this is two different things. No, we're not gonna learn about the Bermuda Triangle in class today. <laughs> you know, conspiracy theories? No, this is a math class. Come on. The Bermuda Triangle? Okay, a couple people heard of it. Now, my definition, your definition are two different things. What do I mean by that? So there's an area in the Atlantic Ocean, actually off the coast of Florida. It goes from Florida to, I believe, um, Cuba to somewhere in the middle of the ocean. I'm not sure exactly where, but it is a place where I think that the magnetic fields of the earth messes with ships navigation. And, you know, especially like way back when in olden times, like Pirates of the Caribbean kind of ships we're talking about. They used to have a navigation system where they would have a needle, a compass in a, in a uh, glass jar. You know, compasses are directed by magnetic fields. So, you know, they would always be pointing north. And so you would direct your boat based off of that information. I believe when they got into the Bermuda Triangle, when they got in there, the compass would start spinning because it, I think it was the perfect triangular area where 
there's so many magnetic things pulling at one end that they all lose the balance and they have a perfect balance in that area. No, I don't think that people are getting sucked into some like weird hole in the middle of the ocean. No, I don't think aliens are coming in. I honestly think that people get lost at sea and the wood that they had, especially way back when, the wood that they had started to rot and it would take over the board and it would sink the ships. Now, does it affect the ships nowadays? I have no idea. I don't know what the Bermuda Triangle really is, but that's how I differ from you guys. You guys think it's like some ghost or some like thing that's literally swallowing ships. I think it's something just a little bit different than that, but I do think that something is out there and it is possible that the magnetic fields of the Earth does affect ships. Second to last, let's go Illuminati. Yeah, Illuminati. All right, we got some. All right, man. Hey, I hear you over there. You think a secret world organization has taken over? It has enough power to not only to jeopardize other people's thoughts and processes, but it has enough power to regulate certain things in the world. I get it. I don't know if that one's true, but who am I to judge? You know, <laughs> what's that? Oh, Jay Z and Kanye's. Oh, come on, man. Come on, don't 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 do that to me. Kanye and Jay Z, really? All right, well, I think you got your people messed up. But no, there could be a secret society that really messes with people, right? Last conspiracy theory you talked about is the mattress firm or the mattress stores. How they are instead of being actual mattress firms and mattress stores, that they are actually money laundering areas. I know what you're saying. The cartel is going to come after me after this. Theories, although there are many and they have been around for a very long time, we can't prove that they're true or false. I don't have any irrefutable evidence that Bigfoot isn't real, that aliens don't exist or anything like that. What I will say as far as like the Pythagorean theorem goes, theories are things that are possible. They are possible, but there's no irrefutable evidence supporting them. A theorem is something that has been proven and is constantly still true for the area and the hypothesis. So yeah, let's get into it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? 